Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today it's not gonna be about folding at home even though if you haven't joined my team my playhouse team on folding at home well I can tell you that this morning we were number 414 on the on the list of the best teams or the most performing team so please join and if you're already joined well put in some more effort dude but today we're gonna be talking about Hewlett Packard drives because Hewlett Packard Enterprise has had some um, issues with their SSDs and um, yeah it, it's, it has been a shit show uh, most of them has been um, all of them I guess has been these Intel drives various um, models Hewlett Packard puts their own firmware on there and that wasn't very good um, this is a drive that that started failing and what it would do was that you know SSDs you they have some number of read and writes and uh, at some point the drive will just say well now I don't work anymore and often they will slow down but you can actually get your data off of there but this one would just it would just say whoa we reached the number of read writes now dead and it did that almost immediately after uh, they were new and these drives came with the original firmware on them which they called oh I'm wrong this one is actually an HPG2 they came with HPG1 yeah I have one here you can see the top one here HPG1 and if we go down to the other one that one has HPG2 so I was involved with these drives at work and we had ordered some brand new equipment with the latest and the greatest drives in it these all the equipment was ready to go we were installing and suddenly drives were failing from one end to the other end to start with no one knew what was going on and we were like swapping drives one here and two there but then they started to die like two drives in a day and something like that so we kind of knew that it was a bigger issue than that and as the equipment was brand new it was still under both warranty and service and probably also the well, breakout warranty if something breaks right after arrival you, they're usually okay with more service and support but as these are Intel drives and branded in HP servers there, there's more chairs and the, the and stuff can go wrong so we were told that there would be a new firmware available for that we had the HPG1 and we were told that oh, there will be a new firmware it's not gonna be long it's always a long time when you have a ton of equipment that you're waiting to put into production and have to wait for the newest firmware so well um, I can't remember how many weeks passed but well finally it got there and Hewlett Packard even sent a technician to, to install that firmware and, and we got everything up to HPG2 only to find out a bit later that uh, the issue was still there so um, at that point we told HP that we wanted another brand of drives in there and they actually complied and we got a shit ton of Micron drives in there instead and um, yeah they have been working awesome ever since not a single issue so it has only been these Intel drives and these are Hewlett Packard branded Intel SSD DC S46 series and they are 1.92 terabytes but therefore we never got to firmware them beyond that and since then HP has released an HPG3 and the latest is an HPG5 and um, well I had a couple of these drives so I thought well why don't we firmware update them as long as they are not in any system I would expect that they would be okay but if they make this error well they will be dead and ready for scrap so um, we're gonna try and firmware update these drives I am of course a lazy bastard so um, the first attempt I tried was to take a um, hard drive to a USB 3 and pop it in there and the drive actually popped up no problem whatsoever and I could inside crystal disk info I could see the drive and I could see the the firmware level 
and I went to Hewlett Packard's site um, where they have the firmware widely available you don't have to log in or anything they kind of know that this is something that people want and uh, and I'm sure they have gotten enough shit for this so there you can download a firmware updating tool and they actually made one available for Microsoft server versions so that us not Linux Googles can also uh, flash our drives so let's um, let's go see what I tried and what I got working. So first I used a laptop here um, in the winter garden um, because the weather is so beautiful outside. So um, yeah, enjoying that. And then I can manage the robot lawnmower as well. But um, yeah, let's see what I tried and where I failed. So first we need to download the firmware kit. And um, if you punch in, this is the model number of the hard drive and just the firmware. And there is um, Hewlett Packard Support Center and, and well, it, it pops up right at the top. So if we go in there, they are actually really helpful um, and we get different choices down here. Last review of this came out uh, 19th of December, 2019. So it's about half a year old. That's cool. And that one is for Linux, this one is for Linux and Windows and VMware ESXi I'm guessing. This one is just for Windows, so I'll be getting that one. So just pop that. And you get a lot of good info, including all the model numbers that this firmware will apply to. Um, these drives were kind of the first drives to do this trick since then, earlier this year, Hewlett Packard Enterprise had this problem again with some other drives. Luckily that time I was not involved because we didn't have any of those drives, but anyone else might not have been so lucky. So down here we can just, we can download this tool. It's right there. So I did that of course, so uh, minimize that. And that tool I put in my temporary library on the C drive. And that's where we are um, gonna be installing that from. But first let's connect the hard drive. Can I do this with one hand? I guess I could probably. There. and we pop that in the side oh that's always wrong there so that is now popped in being an SSD it's very quiet yeah very very quiet but if we go in here we can see that there is a drive here and we can also right click here and get some important information properties and it gives us the name up here so that is cool but we have crystal disk and I have opened that and we can see the information about the drive and this one which is the one that had HPG2 on the label but it actually has you can kind of see the, the last uh, bit of the name here HPG3 on there so it has been upgraded so this drive is probably not that bad but if we want to try and run this firmware update thing here it um, tells us that it's gonna be trying to do that and it's gonna try to install and it's gonna come and it's gonna be telling us that it can't do that it can't communicate the right way with the drive and as far as i've found is that it does not like this usb thinky that's that's no that's not a good one it um also did not like this one this one i took out of a western digital box and we modded this so that it should uh, it should forget about the the Western Digital code thingy and just pass the drive through to the operating system. That did not also work. So what did I do? I did this. <laughs> I popped the drive. I had this on the table. That's why I'm using this. It's a really poor choice because this server is so long at booting, and when you firmware update it, it requires a boot. So it's quite stupid that I'm, that I'm using this one but well it was here and um, it, it, it's gonna do the job so um, I managed to fix this one so that one is good so let's check that here we are we have um, crystal disk info and we can see that the firmware on this drive is HPG 5 so it's the latest and the greatest for these drives so I'm guessing that that should be good to go and it has that drive has been running for 16 1637 hours which is not a lot yeah let's see if we can do a couple and these drives are of course hot pluggable so I'm just gonna pull this one out I uh, put a piece of tape on it so that I could get to it I was not sure if I was gonna be able to do that so uh, yeah let's just um, 
do it without the tape. See if we can hit that connector down there. There's one. And we're gonna be putting one on top of that. Hit the next connector. There. Cool. And Crystal Disk Mark sees those two drives. So number one is this one. That one has HPG3. Let's pick the other one. There, that one has HPG2. So even though it's set different on the labels, these drives has actually been updated at some point. This one has only run a thousand hours. Okay, and it's really very simple. So um, even I can figure it out. So you have a chance as well. Double click. And we get another pop-up, want to install, yes, it will do uh, some unpacking. It tells us that, well, software is installed, it's not up to date, so we need to install that. It only see one drive, it would have been very smart if it had seen both of them. But, yeah, it, uh, it does that for quite a while. And there, a little bit later, I'm not sure how long that took, a couple of minutes, it has put the firmware on there, but it will apparently apply at the next system reboot cycle. So, um, yeah, we um, we need to do that. Close. Do you want to reboot? Yes. And this being an IBM X3850 X5, well, I'll have grown grandchildren when this is done. System has booted, and I have opened up Crystal Disk Info, and it sees the first drive here HPG 5 awesome and if we switch to disk 2 that is also now HPG 5 so awesome it took both of them that is marvelous because I was afraid that it would only be able to take one at a time and I was, I was so ready to be bitching about that now I have to come up with something else that's that's a difficult one so this error was the first one that I was aware of that Hewlett Packard had but it wasn't the last because as I said late last year earlier this year there was another one I had addressed this in some videos uh, when it was new this first one and when the second one appeared well, people was very quick to uh, to tell me that this was going on. I actually took a snapshot of my Twitter at some point where I just five comments in a row was about what was going on. I'll try and put that up here. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, guys. I were aware. I do get all the Hewlett Packard bulletin, but they update so much stuff that it's really hard to keep up with what is being updated. And with the next bug that appeared, which happened, I forget, was it 30,000 hours in? The drive would then die. And there was, of course, the conspiracy theory that Hewlett Packard had forgot to put in the randomizer so that they wouldn't die all at once. And um, yeah, kind of amusing. And I, and I do, of course, not know enough about this to tell you that that wasn't the case. But we got these drives firmware updated. That's awesome. So now we are ready to, um, to put those in. And I would think that they have fixed this issue by now. It's a couple of years old. But if you're into Hewlett Packard high-end enterprise equipment, you should definitely go and check your drives. Make sure to, to punch in the model number and see if there's any new firmware available. Because um, this is really bad. The drives will hit that amount of hours at the same time. And your system will just crash and no drives. And you will have to put in new drive and retrieve your system from backup. It's a lot of extra work. But as I say, HPE, it stands for Hardware Protected Employment. You will never get laid off. There will always be work for you. But jokes aside, please remember to join my team on Folding at Home. And if you're already joined, put in some more effort. I look forward to you beating my ass. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.